Hello, my name is Fredo Salmon Mijage from Mandukea, Tanzania. I'm a history teacher of ordinary level, so I welcome you to start a new topic which is nationalism and uh, decolonization. It is the second topic in Form 4. So let us see the definitions of this concept, nationalism and decolonization. It means that nationalism, or the term nationalism refers to the desire of a society or country or nation to, to escape or to free themselves from the foreign domination. So there is the meaning of nationalism. Or is the, is the desire of a country or nation to attain or to restore the lost freedom from the foreign domination. So we can define the nationalism in Africa as the term, the term nationalism refers to as the movement or feeling based on common cultural aspiration that binds people together and finally leading to national independence. It means that the term nationalism refers to the movement or feeling based on common cultural aspiration that bind people together and finally led to the to the struggling for independence or national independence. So what is the meaning of African nationalism? Because here we have seen the, the definition of nationalism in general. So let us see the African nationalism. African nationalism was a desire of African people to rule themselves without being governed by the foreign people or Western countries. It means the African, African nationalism was the desire of African people to, to, to govern or to rule themselves without, without being governed by the Western countries or foreign domination or European countries. So we can see that during that time most of African all Africans wanted to be free from European domination of an African continent. It means that the, by that time or during that time, the most Africans wanted to free themselves from the foreign domination or European domination. Uh, that Europeans were dominating the African continent. So the most African nations wanted to free themselves from the European or Western domination. And this process or that idea was started in the middle of 19th century. It means that we can trace the African nationalism soon after the end of the Second World War because it is when the, the, the African nationalism gained momentum. And African nationalism was started even before the Second World War, before the Great Economic Depression, even before the First World War. But it was at the low extent. But after the, 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 the end of the Second World War, it is when the African nationalism or nationalism in Africa gained momentum. So let us see the importance of nationalism or the uh, importance of nationalism. It means the first important it brought the sense or it bring the sense of unity among the African ethnic ground. It means the importance of African nationalism was it brought the sense of unity among the African ethnic ground that the Africans were separated by the European nations or European domination. So the Africans wanted to bring the sense of unity among themselves, to bring together those ethnic or ethnic groups which were separated or divided by the European powers in order to be simple for them to dominate the Africans. So the many Africans were aiming at a at bringing the ethnic groups in Africa together as a single nation and to be independent rather than and without being dominated by the foreign domination. But another importance of nationalism it is 
to dismantle all the evils of European capitalism that growing the early year of independence. It means that the importance of nationalism it dismantled or it removed all evils of European capitalism that was that was occurred in the early of year of independence. It means the evils of capitalism was immediately or witnessed at high expense at high extent when the the Second World War was ended because the European capitalist nations wanted to intensify the exploitation of African continent because their economy were affected. So they they find or they found the alternative way of revamping their economies was to colonize intensively the African countries in order to maximize the profit and that will contribute to the development of their economies in their countries. Another importance was it brought political awareness to most African people against colonial domination. It means that the African nationalism brought the political awareness among the Africans in order to eliminate the foreign domination or European national European domination that we are dominating the African continent. And the another importance or the last importance of nationalism was it rejected the capitalist rule or domination. It means that after getting the awareness or political awareness, thus they, they decided to remove or to eliminate the capitalist rule or European rule or European domination. So these were the importance of nationalism in Africa. So after looking the importance of African nationalism, let us see the factors which led to the to the lies of African nationalism. And we have to bear this in our mind that the African nationalism was triggered by the various reasons or factors or causes. And those causes were subdivided into two, which were the internal factors and the, the external factors for the lies of African nationalism. So we are going to start with one category after another. The first category which we are going to start it is internal factors. The internal factors included almost six, but not the rest. Uh, there are many reasons or internal factors that led to the rise of African nationalism. The first internal factor was colonial exploitation. As I have told you that African nationalism was started or gained momentum soon after the Second World War. This was because after that, after the end of the Second World War, many European nations intensified the exploitation of African natural resources with the aim of revamping the affected economy by the World War II. So those European nations like Britain, France, Italy, Germany, Portugal, and Belgium and other nations in Europe wanted to exploit African nations intensively and at the maximum level so that they can produce oil and maximize the profit which will lead to the contribution of development of their economies which were affected by the Second World War. For example, the natural resources like minerals the forest resources were highly exploited by the Europeans that led to the Africans get consciousness about the exploitation that done by the capitalist or European nations and that's why they decided to wage themselves on the demanding for their independence in order to rule themselves without by the foreign domination that the beginning of African nationalism. Another internal factor was the destruction of African rule. It means that 
Soon after the establishment of colonialism in Africa, the local rulers were denied and subjected out of the system. It means that the local rulers were not involved in an administration system. And those European countries or European denominations established their rules, which was making the Africans not participate in the administration. Even those local rulers, chiefs and the other, were subjected from the system of ruling. So, and few, 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 Af few European nations that were including the Africans to, to, to rule them there, to rule their fellow Africans, was British government and in, in some colonies, for example in Tanganyika and uh, in the Ghana. Those were the examples where British used the, the system of ruling by involving the Africans through their fellow Africans. So the African rule was destructed and the, the Europeans or the Europeans introduced the, the system of administration. For example, Britain introduced the, the indirect rule, while some colonies like in Kenya introduced the, the dialect rule. And and the France introduced the, the France introduced the assimilation polis and the association polis. And uh, you can see the Belgium Belgium and Portugal introduced the, the dialect rule which involved the only Europeans in administration. And the Britain in some extent involved the Africans in the administration. So the, 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 these actions which were done by the Europeans led to the Africans to feel inferior and, and they see themselves that they are no longer with their needs in the, in the front of, the, of their fellow Africans. And that's why they decided to organize themselves and to mobilize their fellow Africans to wait on demanding their lost African rule and uh, independence. So that's why the African independent, uh, African nationalism was occurred. Another was discrimination and segregation. It means that the Europeans were discriminating and desegregating the African people. It means that in products and in the pro, provision of social services like uh, education, Health service and uh, and the water supply, electricity supply, and the housing were segregated in nature and the discriminating in nature. Uh, for example, the in providing the health services, the white the white people were given the high priority in getting the better better health services, and the African the black skinned people were getting the low quality as a service. So you can see that there were unequal distribution or provision of as services in the hospitals and the other as centers. But in the schools, education, the, the, the white people were getting the better, better education service compared to the blacks or black people who were subjected out of the education system. And the few or oh, the, the, the son of, of kings and the, and the rulers were get the education, so we are getting the education service. So some of the uh, men of the African people or men of African son were not getting the education service because of the segregation and the discrimination nature of the Europeans, and that actions of discrimination and segregation made the African to get the awareness and the consciousness and the influence on eliminating those segregative and discriminative people from their motherland and to get the freedom of ruling them there. And that's why the occurrence of African nationalism. But the fourth internal factor was destruction of African culture. As we know that after, after, uh, after the coming of Europeans in African continent, they come up with their Western culture, which was introduced in Africa and forced the Africans to adapt them so that the African culture must be discarded and they were no longer in use 
as the Europeans considered the African culture as uncivilized, barbaric, and uh, and uh, undeveloped people. So they wanted it to to establish their European culture for Africans. So, for example, in religious beliefs, the religions or traditional beliefs beliefs of Africans were discarded and the, the Europeans introduced the, the Western religions like Christianity from Portuguese people and uh, Islamic from Arabs or Al Arabic nations and the other religions which were introduced by the foreign domination. So the destruction of African culture made the Africans to get con the, the consciousness that the, the, the time of demanding the lost things of Africans or the lost dignity of Africans it is time to restore those things which were lost and taken by the European nations. The another internal factor was law of colonial education. It means that the provision of colonial education led to the emergence of some African elites who were able to mobilize and uh, conscientize the, their fellow Africans in order to stand at the one at the one stable and the strong unit to demand and uh, and uh, wage on on movement for demanding their freedom or lost freedom by the by the European domination. So you can see some examples of uh, colonial colonial allies or or people or allies who were the result of colonial education, like like uh, Marine Julius Kambarage Nyelele was the the one among those who got the colonial education and the, that Marim Julius Kambarage Nyelele helped the Tanganyikans and the mobilized the Tanganyikans to to unite and they demanded the independence for Tanganyika as as they used the peaceful method to 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 eliminate the British rule and in 1961 Tanganyika got uh, independence from the British rule. And so another example of allies who got colonial education was Kwame Nkrumah from Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta from Uganda, and uh, other, other, other allies who got colonial education. And those allies who got the colonial education were mobilizing and uniting the fellow Africans to to struggle for their independence and that the occurrence of African nationalism. But another or the last factor or internal factor for the African nationalism was Italo Ethiopian conflict of nineteen thirty five. This was the event whereby Italy under Benito Mussolini was invited in Ethiopia in 1935 under the, under the Italy expansionism policy. So Italy, after inviting Ethiopia in that year, Ethiopia defeated Italy. So in that sense that the African countries came to know that the, even the Europeans can be defeated. So that's why made and the bear, bear the conscious and the awareness on the mind of Africans that we Africans, we can struggle and fight against the foreign domination and to remove or eliminate those Western countries in our motherland. So the event of that year of 1935 of Italy invasion to Ethiopia make or led to the contribution of African nationalism. So after looking the internal factors for the African nationalism, let us see the external factors for the African nationalism. The first external factor was impact of world wars. World wars, it means the first world war and the second world war. It means that the impacts of these wars led to the led to the decline of European nations' economies. So, in the due to the decline of those of those European countries' economies, led to to be to be unable to control 
the colonies in Africa as, as, as in the previous time. So the, 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 the domination in Africa was become unstable and those Africans were gaining consciousness that the Europeans are no longer with stability to dominate us because their economies have been shaken by those world wars. So the impacts of the First World War and the Second World War led to the increase or led to the gaining of momentum for African nationalism among the Africans. Another or the second external factor was the rise of the UN or United Nations Organization that was formed soon after the Second World War in 1945. So the UN or United Nations Organization was formed with the aim of maintaining the very peace and security and ensure that all nations in the world are getting the equal, equal chance in, in, in ruling themselves. So the UN under, 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 under the Trusteeship Council made the, 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 some European nations to, to, to prepare the African nations like Tanganyika and the other countries which were under German. So in order to prepare those countries to, to get their independence. So you know, paid a lot or played a vital role in, in supporting or pressurizing those, those European nations to, to, to free the African countries to be, to be free and, uh, and getting their independence. So you can see the, the nations which were under the mandatory territory of European nations like in British rule were got the independence due to the pressurization or pressure from United Nations organization. Another external factor was the rise of United or Union Soviet Socialist Republic or USSR. This was the socialist followers or socialist nations in Europe. So these nations or this union were supporting the African nations which were accepting the socialism ideology. So they supported those nations or African nations materially as well as morally, morally support in order those African nations will eliminate the, the foreign domination. For example, in Tanganyika, under Julius, Marim, under Julius Kambarage Nyelele, we have got the support from USCCR, whereby, whereby the USCCR government provided military support to, 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 to African, to Tanganyikans, and the moral support so that they can eliminate the British rule in Tanganyika. So, so we can see that some soldiers were taken from Tanganyika to, to Russia to get the military techniques so that if the British rule will deny to grant the independence for Tanganyikans, there will be enough and a strong army which will fight against the, the British rule. So in one way or another, USCCR provided more and the and the financial assistance to the to the African countries to fight against the foreign domination and ends that pronounce the end the, the beginning of African nationalism. Another it was independence of Ghana of 1957. It means that the the the, the, the independence of Ghana in 1957 brought or, or given the lesson to other, to other African nations that the, 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 the process of independence can be attainable in easy way. So many African nations like Tanganyika followed to use the peaceful way as Ghana used it in attaining our independence in 1957. So those other, those another or other African nations followed like Tanganyika and other use the peaceful method to attain their independence and the, especially Malim Julius Kambarage Nyelele learned a lot from Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana 
and that Mwalimu Julius Kambala Genyelele was, was learned many, many lessons from that leader of Ghana. So those techniques and the ideas which, which he got from Mkwame Nkrumah were used to mobilize and unite the Tanganyikans to acquire the lost independence from British rule. Another was the lies of USA. It means after the after the the end of the Second World War, USA got that was uh, the the leading superpower of the world, or uh, the leading capitalist superpower in the world. So United States of America was supporting the African nations to dismantle or to eliminate the foreign domination by providing financial support and the moral support to African nations which were supporting the capitalist ideology because the USA had the capitalist ideology and the USCCR had the socialist ideology. So USA was USA with capitalist ideology were, was providing the financial and the moral support to those African nations which were which were accompanying with the capitalist ideology so that led to the lies of African nationalism. And the last point or the last external factor was the law of Bandu conference. The law of Bandu conference. And that Bandu conference was held in Bandu in Indonesia. And that, that conference was attended by the various African leaders or African 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 officials or readers like Mwalimu Julius Kambara Genyelele, Kwame Nkrumah, Milton Ogote and other readers from African nations. And in that conference where there were Indian leader who was known as Mahatma Gans and that leader was was giving the the various ideas and the techniques which the Africans leaders must use in demanding their their independence and that bandu conference led to the formation of non alignment movement or non allied movement in 1955 and that that conference that led to the formation of, of nam in 1955 the non allied movement were providing the support of those nations which were neither supporting capitalist nor socialist. So in that sense, the Bandung conference that took place in Indonesia in Bandung was in one, in one way or another supported or contributed to the lives of nationalism in Africa. And truly there, these were the factors that led to the, to the lives of African nationalism. So let me give you the exercise which you have to perform after looking this short explanation and the short history about uh, African nationalism and their factors as well as the importance of nationalism or African nationalism. So the exercise has the, the following questions. And the first question is explaining the factors for the lies of African nationalism. And the second one is assess the law of USA and USCR to the African nationalism. Until there, this is the end of our today's lesson. So thank you for watching me attentively and reaching me carefree. So I welcome you to proceed with the next session. Have a good day and thank you for choosing Educare Tanzania. Bye bye.